I don't know if it's true or not, but somebody told me the two words I used most in my last video about Iowa were boring and corn. My goal for the next week is to find more words to describe Iowa. They say Iowa's corn produces more oxygen than the Amazon. Iowa is also second in the country for agriculture. So maybe my first new word to describe Iowa is important. Believe it or don't, I had never been to Iowa before. I had written about it and talked to lots of people who live here. I knew a lot about Iowa, but I had never actually stepped foot here before. I'd spend an entire week here crisscrossing the state to figure it all out. When's the last time you ever heard of anybody spending a week here voluntarily? Right now, we're in the small town of Belle Plaine, population 2,419. That's about average for small towns in Iowa. I'd know. I mean, I stopped in every small town I came to along the way. And there are a lot of small towns in the middle of Iowa. I had a choice. I could either begin this video with sports or farming, because Iowa's two things, farming and sports, that's just about it. I chose farming, mostly because of the cool farmer family I met. This is Todd Family Farm, located way out on a dirt road in Tama, Iowa. Well, technically we're in Tama, but there isn't a Casey's for like 30 minutes, and that's a long way for Iowa. Adam and Jill Todd and their seven kids run a small operation that mostly takes in corn and beans. They also raise hogs here. Going back 20 years ago, this would have been considered a huge farm. But today, with all these big time farmers and their giant machines, 400 acres is nothing. But for the Todds it is. They use self-sufficient farming here. Kind of an old school approach to farming. They have big combines too, but they do everything themselves. This is their 32nd year out here at this place, and I think they're gonna be here for a long time to come. Out of the seven kids, five of them are old enough to work alongside mom and dad to bring in the harvest. Their daughter, Abby, even started a popular YouTube channel where she shows all the ups and downs of running a farm. You should subscribe to that. Way out here, Adam preaches great parenting, faith, morals, and hard work. These are great kids and they didn't grow up in a city. That's why I'm here, for stuff like this. I wanted to meet people and see things that are untouched by today's America. I'd heard if you want to see good in the country, you come to Iowa. This is another city down the road, maybe 30 miles away from Tama. It's called Marengo. It's a little bit smaller than Tama, but all these Iowa towns look the same. A little downtown, 500 homes scattered about, and if you're lucky, a Casey's. Driving around these small towns in Iowa, you see a lot of the same people. A lot of true American patriots who love God, guns, and country. Some will say, this is the real America. This is good folk territory. Iowa's always on list for being the best place to raise a family and one of the best places to retire. Iowans will tell you Iowa is 75% bowels and 100% awesome. It's really safe here. Iowans take responsibility for their actions. They support the police and the military, and they believe people need to be held accountable if they commit a crime. They believe in cops, courts, judges, and the rule of corn. Most folks out here are very much stuck in their ways, but they're open-minded. Just about all these folks out here are older white conservatives in these old towns. The state of Iowa is 90% white. I'd venture out here in places like this, it's 99% white. Hardly anyone way out here votes damn liberal. Okay, a few do. Politics-wise, this is a very important state. If you're a presidential candidate and you can win the hearts of Iowans, you're on your way to bigger things. As you may know, Iowans command a lot of attention when it comes to politics. Every four years, anyone who wants to be president comes here and takes pictures with little farm babies all over the state. 
Why would a state that's economically challenged and culturally challenged have such an impact on the future of our country? Well, drive around here long enough and you'll start to believe these people might know a little bit about what's best for us. Iowa anchors the American heartland, a region that produces much of the world's corn, beans, pigs, and cattle. There isn't a square inch in Iowa that's not corn or beans. There's no forests here. There aren't any mountains. Anything not covered in concrete is covered in seed. Corn just grows really well here. It can go from seed to seven foot high stalks in three months. Sometimes the corn grows so fast you can hear it growing. No shit, I know. Most of this corn won't be eaten by you and I. It'll be eaten by pigs or turned into soda sweetener. Scattered throughout the cornfields are windmills, sturdy old homes, and peeling red barns. There's lots of grain elevators, church steeples, and water towers with the town name on the side. Folks ain't rich out here, except a few farmers. As a whole, Iowans earn average salaries. But this is the eighth cheapest state to live in. People wave at you, even though they probably don't even know who you are. In many small towns, it's rare to see a traffic light. I left the keys in the car every time I stopped at Casey's. Where we are now is a place called Sac City. It's along some two-lane road, halfway between two big cities that aren't very big. We stopped here to see the world's biggest popcorn ball, but stumbled instead on something much, much cooler. A county fair! Now, if you've ever been to a county fair anywhere in the Midwest, you know what these things are all about. Awesome is what they're all about. This one here is about as small a county fair as you'll ever find. It's maybe the size of a church parking lot. Small town Iowa people. Good folks, I tell you. I could just show you clips of this fair and play awesome music, and it'd be the best music video you've seen all summer. Little games to win prizes. Tiny rides that scare three-year-olds. Mini tractor pulls. Hey, we need the 12 year old boys to line up on the east side of the track. King Gullet, Chase Wilson, and Ashton Kids take pride in winning the best pig in the 4 H competitions here. Housewives take pride in their pies. Men take pride in their big fish and white tailed deer and their tractors. But farming isn't what it used to be here. Adam, the farmer we met earlier, told me he thinks the future of all farming will be automated one day. It's already being dominated by corporations. That's why it's refreshing to see his entire family out here working hard. Because Iowa's biggest export isn't corn or pigs, it's kids. Like, a lot of kids don't want to farm anymore. Why do you guys enjoy it so much? I enjoy work, and I want to have something to do. So it's really nice, and you get to do different things every day. And it's, I really enjoy it a lot. Do you think you're going to live out here for a while? Yeah, I'll probably try to live out here for my whole life. Oh, yeah. When the farmers and the kids leave town, there goes the feed store and the gas station and the damn hardware store. Income dollar generals, mom and pops can't compete with them. There's a lot of towns in Iowa that are getting hollowed out. You can see it when you drive around. In the summer, there's a lot of charm to these downtowns. But in the winter, the vibe would be way different here. Some of these places are able to hang on though. A few are thriving. And this whole new trend of people moving to smaller towns will probably give some of these Iowa towns a big boost. Now there's going to be a lot of people in Iowa that are going to say, stop talking about us. We don't need any more of them out of state city slickers coming in here and ruining things. To that, I'll say, let's let the pictures and the commentary speak for themselves. I don't know how people feel about Iowa after this trip is over. Shit, I don't know how I'll feel about Iowa once this trip is over. August bean meal was down 290 at 431.50. August bean oil was up 172 at 60.32. Driving around with nothing to do, with nothing around, gives you time to think about your life a little bit. Just time to think about the world and the country. On this particular day, I thought about a lot of things, most of which I'm sharing with you right now. You never know what you'll find in Iowa. I mentioned the county fair I stumbled onto one Friday morning. That was endearing. The whole reason I went to Sac City was to check out the world's biggest popcorn ball, which is, yes, right across the street from a Casey's. I know. 
this popcorn ball weighs 9,370 pounds or did weigh that much. It's kind of falling apart these days. There's little bugs that are eating away the goop. One day, it won't be the world's largest popcorn ball unless they add more popcorn to it. I also saw the famous teacup coffee pot water tower combo. These are in the middle of a small town called Stanton. One water tower is a big teacup and one water tower is made of a coffee pot. They average 80 feet in height. Supposedly, this tower can hold 2 million cups of coffee, but I doubt anyone actually put coffee in it before. The teacup was added later. Apparently, they've both won water tower awards. I didn't know there were water tower awards. Iowans do. One day, I came to a little town called Moreland, population 154. This place is neat. You gotta be careful when the train passes through town. It'll stop you from seeing your relatives on the other side of the track for like an hour. Cool place though, great people. Okay, the reason I stopped here is because I wanted a beer. Here I found Ralph's, a totally my kind of place kind of place. Vinegar soaked eggs for a buck. Budweiser's for a buck 75, gambling machines, an old pool table, creaky screen door, all of it. I'd imagine this is the perfect place to watch Iowa sports on the weekends or NASCAR. Iowa has a lot of these come and go convenience stores everywhere. Ha <laughs> ha, LOL. Cool little places, but they're nothing compared to the damn Casey's. Did someone say Casey's? Casey's pizza is the life I needed Casey's pizza is the wake up reason and all I want is a piece of you I know I know everybody's waiting for the big Iowa Casey's reveal I've been trying a Casey's pizza in every state along the way to see which state makes it the best Casey's was founded in Iowa and I think Casey's Pizza is responsible for feeding half this damn state. So I was curious to know how their pizza would compare. I have to say, it's pretty damn good. It's good enough for second place so far. Not too bad, Iowa Casey's. It's almost perfect, but still not as good as Nebraska. I have one more Casey's to try in Missouri, but that won't come for about six days. Two-thirds of Iowa's towns have fewer than 1,000 residents. Much of Iowa is older. It has the highest percentage of people over 75 years old. Seems like the most extravagant building in every town in Iowa is the church or the funeral home. But it remains a great place to raise a family. It's cheap and safe, and most folks have good values. Just about everyone here strives to be middle class. And that's a good thing, right? I mean, when you get a brand new F-150, that's how people humble brag here. Why wouldn't these people be friendly? They live in a state where people have more freedom to do things. If you're in Iowa, you're expected to say hi to strangers and wave at people you've never met. If they ask you how you're doing, they really want to know. People here drive slower, they're generally more patient, and life moves at a much slower pace. People show respect here. Sometimes. This is an interesting sign. End slavery? Get a gun? Damn, Iowa. I guess Iowa nice can be very passive aggressive sometimes. Iowa isn't very racist at all. At least according to a scientific study. Wow. Look at that map, Mappy. Most of the country is not very racist, but Appalachia sure is. I wonder why that is. Because it's all white people there. Well, I don't know about all that, but racism is very sad and it's very mean. Let's get off that topic. Jeez, let's talk about things to do. The internet ain't much worth a shit way out here, but the porch works. When the weather isn't actually cold and gray, there's things to do besides drink. They swim in the creeks, play at people's houses, wrestle in the tassel. They definitely go to church. The diet of a typical Iowan is pork. Pork is the shrimp of the prairie. They also eat ribs, loins, chops, roasts, sausage, bacon, and ham. They eat tenderloin a lot. They aren't known for being healthy, Iowans aren't. A hospital's 50 miles away at least. 
jobs are too. A car charging station is actually, I don't think there is a car charging station in Iowa. You can't just live out here and not take care of your shit. It's very clean out here in Iowa. Stuff is old, but there's not a lot of decay. The wounds that get opened up in the Iowa countryside always seem to heal. On my way to another roadside attraction, I spotted the redneck limo driving down the highway. That was neat. The redneck limo right here out in the middle of Iowa. I bet they actually make a lot of money doing that. I actually got a ticket in Iowa. I haven't had a speeding ticket since I was like 18. I was going 87 and a 65, but he cut me a break. Nice guy. I like Iowa State Troopers. It's so wide open out here. You can't blame people for trying to get to where they're going. This is Brandon, Iowa. Not a lot going on here. Just another small, boring Iowa town. More country living. Except they have the world's biggest frying pan. Oh, wait. Iowa's biggest frying pan? There's bigger ones in other places? Why? That's such a sexist thing. Is this supposed to inspire women to cook? You should go visit the world's biggest toilet. Are you being serious right now? Can you watch one video without it being about you? Where'd you get that hat? You look like Holly Hobby. You can go anywhere in blue jeans here. Iowans rarely dress up. And if they do, it means switching their shoes. Every farm is a square. Every county is a square. And every person might be square too. hy is a big deal in rural Iowa. If you have a hy V grocery store in town, you're lucky. For most places out this way, it's Dollar General. And they ruin small towns. All these little towns, they're just relics of days gone by. I don't know what the future holds in places like this. Many of these towns probably won't be here one day. Like, look at Little Lemoy, Iowa. There's like 10 houses here. It's technically an unincorporated place. Nobody knows how many people actually live here because check this out. They weren't even included in the latest census. I was going to stop there, but I didn't. I guess I could have counted for the census if I had passed through. And then we have Ames. This is where Iowa State University is. When the kids are in town, there might be 58,000 people here. But really, it's just a smaller city a bit north of Des Moines. Iowans are way into their sports traditions. Just ask all the state wrestling champions how amazing their lives were after they did that. Iowa doesn't have any professional sports teams, so this is what they crave. Here in Ames, there's a lot of tradition. It's known as being a place for techno geeks and math nerds. But let's be real, most Iowans only care about wrestling and football and basketball. The state's kind of split between Iowa State and the University of Iowa, which is a couple hours away. But rivals, they are. Ames is a really lovely place, actually. It's always ranked as one of the best college towns in the country. It's not as flashy and well-known, but there's lots of jobs, public transportation, low cost of living, and it is safe. Ames might be one of the best little towns you could live in this country. Shh, don't tell anyone. This is our football field where all the magic happens. You can just sense the tradition here. I bet there's a lot of people in Iowa who are pretty jealous of me right now. I could be standing on a cornfield somewhere in the state, but instead I'm standing on their football field just two weeks before the season starts. Iowans love sports and Iowans love farming. They're progressive, but hold old school values. They ain't rich, but they don't want to be. I didn't think a state that hardly anybody ever goes to would be this complicated. Hey, maybe that's another good word to describe this place. Complicated. All right, you guys. So we have special guests on today to talk about Iowa. This is Adam and Abby, and they work for uh, Todd Family Farm. In fact, you guys own Todd Family Farm. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. We're uh, It's just getting to September and we have what you call fall fever. So we're tired of taking care of equipment and doing summer stuff and we're ready for harvest. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I can imagine that you guys are. I, I've been following you guys on YouTube. You have a YouTube channel um, called Todd Family Farm where you guys talk about everything that happens at the farm and you show everybody what happens there pretty much um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it's really neat. Uh, we stopped by 
and we hung out with you guys for a little bit out there in Iowa and we had a really good time. You guys have a neat thing going on. We appreciated your visit and uh, we, we enjoy being able to just shine some light on our little part of the world. So, Yeah, well, tell everybody, what's it like to run a farm in a small town in Iowa? Well, when you, uh, that, that's all we know and that's what we want to do. We, we really enjoy it, you know, and you're outside and just like I mentioned earlier, you have uh, different phases throughout the year. So we are ready for fall to get here <laughs> and uh, we're done with summer. But by the time fall gets here, you know, we're excited and we get through fall, then it's, it's winter. So farming is, is wonderful. You have different, it's a little bit of uh, uh, everything going on and it's a nice variety throughout the year. So we wouldn't change it for the world. We love being outside. We get to work together as a family. Uh, the, the children, I've got seven children and they're all a part of the farm and they have a purpose and uh, they're on board. They know what's happening. So when they wake up in the morning, they know what we have to get done. And when they have that opportunity to be involved in it, you know, it gives them a purpose for life too. Abby, what do you think about run, uh, helping run a farm? Did you ever think that uh, you'd be so involved in this? I've always enjoyed being involved, even when I was little. So I've grown up in the farm and I've always loved it. Yeah. Well, what? So like, how has farming changed since, you know, back in the day in the 70s and 80s and stuff? And, uh, you know, think it, it seems like farming has changed a lot. Can you kind of give people an idea on how farming's changed? Yeah, it, it has changed big time. There's two different aspects that they have changed. First, uh, so it used to be uh, 80 acres was big. You know, that's what the government gave everybody way 200 years ago. And if you were a big farmer, you had 160 acres. So we farm uh, 600 acres and 500, 500 acres of that is what is grain or row crops. That's the actual crops. And the other hundred is timber or pasture, miscellaneous ground. So we're 500 acre farmers and your viewers might hear that and they think, wow, 500 acres. We are small farmers. You know, that would have been huge 200 years ago. It, we're, we are almost getting to the point where we would be called tiny right now. So 500 acres is small for farming. So the land is just getting more and more uh, uh, concentrated on different farmers. So where we had 200 farmers in this area, uh, even 40 years ago, 30 years ago, it's less than half that now. And so we have bigger equipment and we have, uh, the other aspect is technology. Technology makes, um, farmers have to, I feel a little bit bad for the old guys because technology is taking over and they're used to the old, old ways. And we're getting in here with computers and GPS and stuff. Farming is super high tech stuff anymore. So, it's it's complicated and it's you, you're working on thinner margin and it is you have to be very uh, in tune to bottom line and, and business practices. So in that aspect, it has really changed even in the last 20 years. Abby, what do you think farming is going to be like when you're your dad's age? Have you even thought about that? Probably a lot of technology and a lot of GPS. They're already getting a lot of computers and it's getting really complicated. But like uh, you say, the older people only know old style. I've only ever really known GPS and computers. So probably a lot more of that. Good. Well, you got the young kids with their young brains and their technology savvy skills to help out uh, old timers. So it's going to be a, you know, a good transition for you. And, and it will, you know, you ask how it's going to be when Abby's my age in, in 20 years, 25 years. And right now, as we're talking, it just so happens the Farm Progress show is going on. And uh, that's where all the tech and all the new stuff comes out. And they're over there looking at what's going to be in 10 years. And they have tractors with no cab because they need no driver. And that even boggles my mind right now. But in 20 years, I think it's going to be something you will see tractors going around. Uh, right now, I sit in the cab and the tractor steers itself. These tractors, they do everything by themselves. And it's, it, it really is mind-boggling where it could be in 20 years. 
Yeah. Um, what is it like to live in a small town in Iowa? Well, Abby coined a phrase. What was that you saying about traffic? Uh, four cars in an hour. <laughs> a lot of traffic. <laughs> so our viewers get, got tickled and they, uh, because in one of her videos, uh, Abby does most of the, the, the videography in our, on our channel. She said, wow, four cars in the last hour. Traffic's heavy today. And that's just something she said. But our viewers, they were just taken aback, you know, for, but that is, we just, we're out here doing our thing. Uh, we just mind, kind of minding our own business, just taking care of, of the farm. And uh, it, it's wonderful, I'd say. Out there in Iowa, uh, do you get the sense that people are wanting to live in small towns still? Or do you, do you get the sense that people are wanting to move to the big cities? It's, uh, you know, young folk want to move to the cities. So they hit 18, 20, 22 they they got their sights on big cities. They get to the big cities and they get their fill of it. And by the time they're 30, 32, we see a, quite a few people. They're trying to get out of the city and get back to to small town. And it's not just so much small town, but here in Iowa, we're smack dab in the middle of the country. So we're about as far. I've never seen the ocean. And some people can't uh, fathom that. But. I really don't want to. I'm happy, but we're as far from the Atlantic as we are the Pacific, as we are from the the Gulf of Mexico. So there's even people they kind of just they they want to get away from it all. I was about away from it all, but it's what we. I mean, I, I love it. We do like having our own little area and uh, just it it's uh, it's wonderful. We appreciate it. Yeah, I. You do not want the problems that big cities have with traffic and crime. And um, that, I, that's part of the reason that I took this trip was to show people that there's alternatives to living in big cities. And there's a part of the country that they probably have never seen and, and didn't really know much about. And this was a teaching moment for them and an opportunity for me to show everybody how wonderful it can be. And, and what I say is one of the last great places to live in the country. It is. And if Around here and in, in what I run into, when you talk to some young folks, they equate big cities with either fun or money. And they don't always understand the, the struggles that comes with the big cities. And uh, they, they want to get there because that might be a ticket to either more entertainment, more opportunity to have fun or more, more opportunity to make money. And we're out here and what we do to make money. And we're not terribly hard up. I, I, I despise it when farmers, people act like farmers uh, mooch or if they're hard up, you know, there's the economy's hard on everybody and it's definitely hard on us, but we work hard and we have, we, we have cut a, a good living out for ourselves, but money is not our prime focus. There's no better place to raise a family. And we would rather be here and work a little extra hard and not know where our next paycheck's gonna come from, not know what we're gonna sell our crop for, and have those unknowns when it comes to our finances. But what I do know is it's a good place to raise a family. And it's, and it's enjoyable to have my family be a part of uh, our livelihood. And it's not just my livelihood, it's our livelihood. So it's second to none on a place to have your family. And you know, with today, People complain about children having their noses in tablets or phones all the time. And my children, they have a tablet and they, they know how technology works, as we've discussed. But they also enjoy getting out and, and accomplishing something, either in the garden or in the field and seeing some, that they have produced something. And I wouldn't trade the opportunity to do that with my family for no amount of money. Man, well said, Adam. Jeez. Uh, but, Abby, and I know I'd, I'd encourage anybody to get away from it all and prioritize family and let finances take care of themselves and work it out. Yeah. Like the way we used to do it in this country. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, so how has Iowa changed? Is there a way to, to tell people how Iowa's changed over time? Is it changed? Yeah, it's, it's changed. Uh, 
like I say, those guys that aren't farming anymore, they're having to go to town to find work. Um, one of the big changes is, is one of the constant struggles in all of Midwest right now, wind turbine farms are coming in and uh, people, I mean, that's a constant thing. So you see a lot of wind turbines on the horizon. And so there's that aspect and, uh, uh, but, you know, I'd have to say in spite of, you know, different style of pickups and seeing wind turbines, a lot of Iowa has, has stayed the same. And you still have uh, uh, multi-generational families to where not only I can pass along values, but there's old people, you know, my parents, other old folks here, and they pass along how it was for them. And when Abby and my other children can see how it was for them, it keeps them humble. It keeps me humble. It helps me realize how blessed we are to, to, we don't have to eat out of the garden if we don't want to go to the store and get food and food is so easy to get. Now we just take it for granted and that's easy, but yet we understand we're only a, a, a week away from the stores, not having food, you know, and it keeps us humble because the old people around here, they used to, not have that. Well, I, I admire what you guys are doing. It's refreshing. And I'm totally glad I stopped by. And um, you guys should follow them on YouTube, Todd Family Farm on YouTube. Uh, look them up. They, they pretty much document um, what's going on on the farm. It's really fun. It, it, it's neat to see what's happening out there. And um, I think uh, people should learn a little bit more about what's going on in the best part of the country in my opinion. So you have anything to add? Abby? I don't think so. <laughs> we appreciate you stopping by Nick. That was, uh, it, it was, and then not only getting to see you and, uh, but getting to see your channel and you bring a lot of light to how it is outside because sometimes we get kind of in a bubble out here and, uh, we take for granted how blessed we are to be out here and, to see we're surrounded by green and so much of the country is surrounded by gray and, and concrete. So you've opened our eyes to how blessed we are. Yeah. That, I think that, that's, I think that was the purpose of, of coming to, to, to show everybody your part of the country to, to sh cause I've been showing a lot of what's wrong with the country for a long time now. And I'm, and I, I thought it's time to show, good in the world and that's why i ended up in, in the midwest because i used to live out there and I, and it's one of the best places to live so i'm glad that you can see um the difference between where you're at and you can appreciate where you're at and i'm glad that other people can see how you how you guys live and how much they can appreciate that in this world so we're thrilled to share our life with other people and let them have some insight to it yeah so. dream of a place most everyone is born Dream of a place hardly anyone is poor. Dream of a place where the people will adore. This is the home nation of the corn. This is the home base of all the corn. This is where they make all of the corn. This is where they pray for all the corn. And all farmers work hard. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.